Hi, I'm Philip Hundle. I'd like to talk to you today about uh, the Matterhorn Express Pipeline Project. Uh, it's a pipeline project that, uh, you know, it's at the initial stages right now in Texas. It's covering quite a few counties, uh, Austin, Burnett, Concho, Fort Bend, Iran, Iran uh, Lampasas, Lee, McCullough, Reagan, San Saba, Tom Green, Upton, Waller, Washington, uh, Williamson County. Uh, I think I mentioned Fort Bend. Also, a part of it uh, is uh, not exactly in Wharton County, even though there's a there's a, a East Bernard lateral is what it's called. So, main pipeline, uh, large 42 inch line, and then there's some other laterals that are 30 inch, 36 inch. So, uh, this video is talking primarily. I, I want to talk to those of you that have received. Uh, either been served or uh, the right-of-way agent has mentioned a temporary restraining order. So uh, I talk about this project as being in the early stages, as you all, and from listening to these videos, you know, we all have talked about the different phases or steps in the pipeline project uh, in a common condemnation or imminent domain project uh, that uh, right now they're in the early stages. Uh, you know, before the initial offers even go out or the final offers go out uh, to the landowners, these pipeline uh, companies, in this case Matterhorn or Whitewater, uh, wants to survey properties where they think the route's going to go or their proposed route. Uh, and so uh, you all out there have been contacted by their right-of-way agents, uh, a firm called Norfleet has been out there contacting uh, right-of-way uh, contacting uh, landowners about their their you know uh, desire to have a right of way across your property but really a desire to go out on your property and do a survey to uh, and several it's, a, it's different parts of a survey it's a civil engineering survey number one but also they do soil testing assessment of uh, the environment uh, endangered spe or species if there are any endangered species or uh, wetlands and you know uh, evaluation, so it's this it's this survey access is what you I'm sure you've been contacted and you've been asked for survey access and you've either verbally said okay or you in writing have signed whatever form that they provided you or and what I'm hoping is by listening to this channel and listening to some of my videos uh, you become more informed and, and you've. Uh, reached out to attorneys that are familiar with condemnation proceedings and asked them to help you with uh, this early stage of it of allowing temporary access but a limited temporary access possibly or for a lawyer to at least explain to you why they're wanting temporary access and uh, and what to do about it so <clears throat> or you've told Matterhorn or the right-of-way agents that you're not interested in the pipeline and you don't want them on your property and you've probably been served with something like this. I'll attach these to, I've redacted these uh, to remove the landowner's name and any information about the landowner, but this is a very typical uh, document that the lawyers for Matterhorn uh, are doing right now. And uh, essentially there's two firms, well-known firm, well condom nor firms in Texas, Ross Molina and Oliveras out of San Antonio, uh, they've got most of the western counties on this line and some of the eastern counties is Abel Freeman firm out of Houston two firms that almost exclusively handle condemnation uh, you know cases for condemnor so they're very familiar with condemnation and this is what they do and so uh, when you know the, the pipeline needs access to evaluate properties that they think they will want to use for their route and if the landowner doesn't give them access, then they'll get their lawyers to file these kind of things, which is a petition and application for a temporary restraining order and injunctive relief. What all does that mean? I'm going to link these. Uh, I'm going to put a link in my, my website to these. That way, uh, if you've been, you know, if they've said that they're going to get a TRO against you uh, or you're curious about what these look like, you can see these on the website. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, they file a, a petition or lawsuit 
specifically limited to getting access on your property. They present a temporary restraining order to the judge ex parte, which means just on their own, not including you, with supporting affidavits, uh, asking the judge to keep you or in, you know, enjoin you, restrain you from um, interfering with Matterhorn and their agents from accessing and entering your property. So basically it's saying uh, the temporary restraining order by the judge is saying you have to let them on your property. Um, and also in that temporary restraining order, the TRO, they were, there will be some things included. And those things are a date for a temporary injunction hearing. So to give you a chance to go in front of the court and you know tell the court your side of the story on why you don't think that they should have access to your property. And then also it also sets uh, a bond uh, amount. So let's kind of unpack all that and let's talk about, you know, the real practical matter of this is, uh, you know, the court may or may not sign a temporary restraining order. If it does, uh, it will also set a hearing date. So you may also, when you get this, these papers, uh, be aware of a, uh, you know, see a date of a hearing on another formal piece of paper that's called a precept. Um, and that, that document's going to say, you, you know, you need to be in court on May 12th or something like that. So um, that's an important date because there will, there most likely will be a hearing. So, you know, and the only reason why I say not for sure there'll be a hearing is sometimes those dates get, get uh, reset or continued. But if there's a date of a temp, you know, a hearing on the temporary restraining order, or really a hearing on their request for injunctive relief or te a, temp a, a temporary injunction, basically to, to extend the temporary restraining order's effects, then, uh, you know, you should be at the hearing and you should be represented by someone that's at the hearing with you. But more importantly, my recommendation is as quick as you can, please contact an attorney that handles condemnation cases for landowners. So you can uh, send him a copy, him or her, a copy of this uh, temporary restraining order in their lawsuit, getting it, asking for the injunctive relief so that they can look at it, review it with you, uh, confirm the date, confirm the date with the court, and then actually reach out to, uh, you know, if you decide to hire that attorney, then the attorney can reach out to the attorneys at, like I said, one of these firms that's filed this petition and uh, see if you can see, see if a limited temporary access agreement can be reached. Uh, that's a practical matter to allow them access, limited access, uh, uh, that's going to be more favorable to you. You'll hopefully be able to have it, you know, in that temporary access agreement, uh, notification when they're going to come on the property, a limited time that they can be on the property and a limited amount of time uh, for that access uh, period. So, so there's lots of things that can be gained by, uh, once again, uh, reaching out to an attorney that can help you better understand what you've been served with, the papers you've been served with, the hearing that's going to be coming up, and then also, uh, you know, a possible limited temporary access agreement with the pipeline company, uh, you know, so the lawyers can talk about that. So I uh, hope this has been helpful. I'm getting lots of calls about uh, or from landowners that are being served with, with these, these type of papers. Uh, and I, I want you to be informed so that, uh, you know, it's not something that uh, causes you uh, an undue amount of stress uh, and anxiety about this whole process. So I think being more informed uh, hopefully will help you uh, navigate the process better. So with that, good luck as always. Thank you.